what's up? Today, I'm gonna to show you how to make super crispy chicken wings at home without using a deep fryer. And then I'm gonna show you two delicious wing sauces to coat them in. To get started, I'll need some wings. Specifically, I've got about four pounds of whole chicken wings here. I go for whole because they're generally about one to two dollars cheaper per pound than the pre-cut, and the pre-cut wings are always cut a little bit sloppily. Now to break these down, I'll just cut through the two joints. The first is between the flat and the drumette here, and the second between the wing tip and the flat. By the way, the wing tip doesn't really have any edible meat on it, but it is good for bringing extra gelatin to chicken stock. So I'll just throw these together into a pint and then freeze them for the next time I'm gonna make some chicken stock. Now, once I've got all these wings cut down, I'll scoot them into a large bowl, then dry brine them with 15 grams of salt and then 15 grams of baking powder. And if you're wondering, hey, Bri, why baking powder, bro? Well, the powder raises the pH of the chicken skin, which allows it to brown a lot more easily, but it also produces CO2 when the wings bake, and that helps puff the skin in a similar way that a deep fryer would, making it glassy and crisp. Now, let's give these wings a quick toss until they're very evenly coated with both the salt and the bee powder. And once they're all caked up like this, I'll move them over to a wire rack on a half sheet tray. I prefer to lay these out in groups of six separated by type, meaning flat, drummy, flat, drummy. This is gonna help them cook a lot more evenly later on. Next comes a very crucial step. I'm gonna move these wings over to the fridge to dry them for as little as four, but preferably 24 hours. And no, you really can't skip the drying step. Wet wings going into the oven just won't be crispy, full stop. The next day, when I pull these out, you can see this overnight dry brine has dehydrated the skin pretty thoroughly. That means even browning and crackly skin once it's in the oven. But before I get to baking, I'll need to lift up the wire rack here and then drop a sheet of foil underneath. This will stop the chicken drippings from burning onto my sheet tray. That'll not only keep my house from getting smoky, but it'll also speed up cleanup time considerably. Now to set up the oven for these wings, I'll just turn my broiler on to high. And if you don't have a gas broiler, like I do, an electric one should work fine, but those tend to have hot spots, so you'll need to keep an eye on your wings and just make sure they're cooking evenly. Also, for optimal browning, I like to keep my oven rack eight inches below my broiler's flame. Any closer and the wings would blister and brown way before the fat in the skin was rendered enough to make them crispy. Now, once this broiler is ripping hot, I'll load my sheet tray. But instead of the traditional perpendicular setup, I'm gonna load this into the oven parallel to the burner. A perpendicular sheet tray would have overcooked wings in the middle and undercooked wings on the outside. Now, I'll set a five minute timer and check back then. While these cook, let's make a couple of quick wing sauces to coat them in. The first of which is a sticky, spicy mango habanero. To make it, I'll grab my blender and combine 75 to 100 grams of diced fresh mango, one habanero pepper, 30 grams of lime juice, 15 grams of apple cider vinegar, one gram of paprika, 25 grams of Frank's hot sauce, and then the backbone of any good sticky wing sauce, honey. I've got 100 grams here and I'm just gonna scrape that in. Next, I'll spin this blender on high speed for about one minute or until this sauce is very smooth. By the way, you could also do this with an immersion blender if you don't have a big dog blender like this one. <coughs> Habanero. Don't worry, this sauce actually isn't that spicy. I'd say it's maybe a 7.5 out of 10. Have the habanero though, if you're sensitive. Next, I'll drop 25 grams of butter into a little baby saucepan, then move it over to the stove. While that comes up, I'll quickly thank the people who make it over at Made In for sponsoring this video. Made In designs professional quality products for the home cook. Professional meaning that Made In products are actually used in multiple Michelin starred restaurants. Whether you're a professional or not, when you're cooking sticky stuff like these wing sauces, using a nonstick pan is something that I highly recommend to make, you know, doing the dishes way easier easier. And Maiden does nonstick very well. Their products are made in America and Italy and use the same composition of the five ply stainless line that I love underneath that nonstick. So in addition to the very easy cleanup, these nonstick pans heat evenly and quickly and give you a really nice sear on your proteins or veggies. Today, I've mainly been using the two quart nonstick saucepan, but pretty much every morning I use the 10 inch nonstick to fry up my eggs. The entire collection of Maiden nonstick pans can go from stovetop to oven up to 500 F and they passed one 100% of a third party's health, safety, and non-toxic tests in both the US and Europe. Check out the nonstick collection and Maiden's other cookware by using the link in my description below to save on your order. Thank you, Maiden. And once that butter is melted and foaming, I'll add in all of my pureed mango habanero base. From there, I'll bring it up to a simmer and reduce the sauce by about 30%. That's gonna take about five to 10 minutes over medium heat. If we don't reduce a sauce like this, it'll be loose and won't properly coat the wing. And once the sauce has cooled down just a little bit, when I pass a spatula through it, it should leave a lazy trail like this. That's how I know it's done. 
Mmm. Dude, habanero and fruit go so well together. It's spicy, it's a little bit tart, and it's a little bit sweet. It's perfectly in balance. Okay, the next wing sauce is gonna be a Chinese hoisin barbecue. But first, we need to check back on the wings. At this point, they've been sizzling under the broiler for about five minutes. And as you can see, the top sides are taking on just a little bit of color and the skin is mildly rendered. Next, I'm gonna flip over all 24 wings, then slide this sheet tray back under the broiler and cook these on the backside for another five minutes. Now to make this hoisin wing sauce, I'm gonna combine 125 grams of hoisin sauce, 100 grams of soy sauce, 15 grams of sesame oil, 125 grams of honey, 20 grams of minced garlic, then 20 grams of fresh ginger that I'm gonna break down into a pulp using my microplane. Of course, if you don't have a microplane, you could just chop this ginger down with a knife, but I would peel it first if you're gonna chop it. Next, I'll move this pot over to the stovetop and bring it to a simmer. Once this hoisin reaches a ripping boil, the sugar inside will cause it to bubble up rapidly, almost like a caramel. At that point, I'll turn the heat down to low and then gently reduce this sauce for about 10 minutes or so. Just like for the mango sauce, we want this hoisin sauce to reach a thickness that has no problem sticking to it. A wing. A good sauce should unify with its wing, not slide off. And after about 10 minutes of cooking, this should have reduced to the point where I can hold the trail when I push my spatula through it. But I would recommend letting the sauce cool for about five minutes before judging the final thickness. When this sauce is near simmering temperature, it's still pretty loose. It's gonna thicken quite a bit as it cools. Man, hoisin is underrated. It's got this mysterious inky quality to it that is super good when paired with the flavors of sesame and soy. This is going to grip the wings really perfectly too. It's got a nice stickiness to it. Back at the broiler, it's been about 10 minutes since we first loaded in the wings and now the backsides have a good start on their rendering and they've got some good browning going. So I'm going to flip them again, cook for five more minutes. I'll pull them out, flip them, cook them for five more minutes, then flip them one last time. So four flips in total. From here, I'll load them in one last time for five more minutes. Now, during this last five minutes, you'll also need to manage this browning pretty closely. These wings are dancing right on the edge of perfect at this point, but they need that last 10%. And the problem is no broiler delivers its heat 100% evenly. So you'll need to be ready to rotate the tray or flip a dark wing over to make sure that all 24 of these are becoming the most beautifully golden brown they can. And after 25 minutes of total cook time under the broiler, these wings are ready to come out. Woo, baby! As you can see, they're well browned, evenly rendered, and the skin isn't flabby at all. In fact, it's crispy. Ooh, and look at all those little crispy micro bubbles in the skin. That's thanks to the baking powder. And it's actually not too different from the result you would get from a wing fried in hot oil. Mmm. The skin is like crackly. It's also really juicy too, which is surprising because the broiler is very intense heat. You would kind of expect it to dry these out, but these are juicy. All that's left to do now is to drip a little wing sauce on top and then give them a toss to get them sticky. Once these wings are sauced, you guys, I think most people wouldn't know they were baked rather than fried. In the end, all you're looking for is a little bit of crispy skin and some juicy chicken meat that easily comes off the bone. And we've got that here. And if you're looking for a more trad buffalo sauce to serve alongside, check out this video for chicken wings three ways from last month. In that video, I also show other delicious wing sauces and one additional technique for making delicious wings at home without a fryer. Check it out.